Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Reality Games Forum Survivor Podcast. I am your host, Colin Connors. With me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Patrick Sullivan. Howdy. How are y'all doing? The Latina flavor, Elisa Garza. Hey, y'all. And the always interesting Alex Cash. Howdy. And our special guest tonight is a correspondent with the Survivor Oz podcast, the one, the only, Michael Albright. Michael, how the hell are you? I'm great. I'm glad to be here. Great to see all your beautiful faces. So, guys, we had an amazing premiere of Survivor, Kai Guy on, and that's how I'm going to pronounce it until I'm told otherwise. Lots of stuff happened. The Brains Tribe got completely demolished. We saw a bunch of new alliances form, but let's jump right into it. And I want to talk about what happened in the first, like, seven minutes when Jeff Probst says, all right, guys, pick a leader, and what possibly could have been going through those people's heads. Alicia, you're on a tribe. They say, pick a leader. What do you do? Um, I just look around and decide who looks like the lead type that I wouldn't necessarily mind following. Or I've already made friends with them on the little boat ride over and they all think I'm the leader. <laughs> well, what, would you want to be the leader? Um, I think I personally had success being the leader when I played my little Survivor Online game. So I think it goes well when it goes well and it goes very poorly when your tribe is sucking now patrick what do you make of the whole uh pick a leader twist because i actually think it's kind of unfair to put survivors on the spot that quickly like it's kind of like productions fucking those people over but do you think it could be a positive i i don't know i saw i think in this uh in this way it's kind of inconsequential because they kind of forgot about it i mean the people they seem pissed off but i guess we haven't seen the other tribes go to travel um but it, it just it didn't seem to matter too much because that was it mattered on the brains tribe though because of the feud that emitted between uh david and garrett over the choice that's god that was so long ago at least <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, I just feel I, like the only way you get out of that by being the leader and then having to choose like the, the quote loser is by picking yourself because you don't get make any enemies. You don't like you don't. I don't know. I don't. I just I feel like, but then to... that looks suspicious. Like you're like really trying to not make suspicious? any enemies. Yeah, but <laughs> what I would have done is I would have picked someone that I thought I could trust and go up to them after and be like, "Yo, you know, like you had to make a decision and I trusted you to make that decision." Um, versus the other people so it wasn't because i think you're the weakest and i wouldn't have chose chosen the weakest person because well, you're likely should... to get an idol so it's smart to do that like you just said yeah I'd wake up with somebody and then talk to them after the fact and say i just wanted you to get the idol so we can use it together yeah i mean i didn't know about the idol but whatever the decision was i think it would have been smarter to pick someone and then try to get with them so, you, Patrick, you think David should have went up to Garrett right afterwards and said, hey, I only picked you because you're in my number one, instead of David being like, hey, you might win a long way away from now, so that's why you got to go. Yeah, come on. I thought he was smarter than that. <laughs> I mean, this... I thought the entire brain's I was smarter than they apparently are. Maybe so. they're smart on no. for an IQ test, but <laughs> they are not proving to be very savvy. <laughs> well, Michael... <laughs> Maybe uh... David picked the dumbest one. <laughs> Well, Michael, what did you, what did you make of a uh, David flat out speaking candidly about how Garrett needed to go when you have seen over and over again Christina speaking out on Redemption Island and Francesca speaking out or Christina speaking out in South Pacific and Francesca speaking out in Redemption Island just these people shooting themselves in the foot at the very beginning of the game and Brad Culpepper did it too. You so he signed his own death warrant as a fan of the show. I don't. I don't know how much she's watching, and this is a you just don't do that. You don't operate in that fashion. I just can't believe how what he did. I can't believe later when Garrett, you know, hey, let's just have a frank conversation. It was like the Lex tribe. Like, we should just tell Jatia she's going to go. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what Dave was thinking at all. Well, David seemed to be saying the whole time, I'm playing for day 39. I'm playing for day 39. So do you think he was just overplaying and shot himself in the foot? Because that's the vibe I got from the whole situation. And any one of y'all can chime in on this. That is exactly what I, what I think he did. Uh, cause, because the thing is, is that uh, it, it's like a, you, you want your to be like a good plot twist. You want people to see it happen on day 39 and like look back at the past 39 days and be like, 
oh yeah, that makes sense. But, but you don't want them to see it happening beforehand. And he's like, oh yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. That that was like he played his cards 39 days too early, really. If you can't get past the first world council, what's the point of playing for day 39? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what's your thoughts on uh, David's playing, or lack of? I posted it on another forum. I said if you can't make it to day nine, you can't make it to day thirty-nine, and you don't take out the strongest guy or your gun for the strongest guy physically, because all your rewards and challenges are gonna immunities are gonna be mostly physical, with maybe a puzzle at the end. But Garrett's the last guy you want to get on your enemies list. So I just thought it was just. Just terrible gameplay. Well, uh, let's segue a little bit from the Brains Tribe. Let's move to the Beauty Tribe. And LJ being the leader and LJ picking Morgan. Was that a safe move? Was that a smart move? Was that going bite to bite him in the butt? What do y'all think? Alicia, I'm throwing it on you as the woman. Um, It seemed like Morgan was a little bit scorned and then they show her later kind of making fun of him for being the older uh beauty tribe member so i think i don't really know for sure unless her, the um alliance of her jeremiah and bryce gains traction how that particular choice will really affect lj's game but i think for right now it isn't a big deal do you think it's possibility that lj goes home first though if the beauty goes to tribal council He's so valuable with puzzles, I think Beauty would have to be very stupid to let him go. Well, I mean, if they're anything like the Brains tribe. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just hoping, because Beauty's Brains was my favorite tribe, and now Beauty has taken that slot. So I'm, I'm hoping better of them than I'm seeing. <laughs> Patrick, you know what? I consider you sassy, so I want to know what you think <laughs> of Bryce, the sassy member of the Beauty tribe, because... <laughs> Personally, I fall in love with Bryce, and I want to hear your thoughts, and if you think he actually has a little bit of game in him. I thought he was brilliant tonight when he um, realized, oh, well, Morgan's, yeah, this Morgan's her name, right? Was pissed off, and because she was the weakest or whatever, he's like, well, I'm going to get with her and make her feel better. So I think he's got some game in him, for sure. Do you think he might be seen as a little, like, see through though do you think anyone's going to catch on because it seemed to me that it was almost a little too perfect for him like they're setting him up for a fall uh it could be or they could be setting him up to do really well i don't know um i think he might be underestimated so i think if he can be savvy and play the game then he can do well because he, i think he will be underestimated <laughs> alex what's your take on bryce uh i th i thought bryce was great uh there was like, I love that he immediately saw somebody who could be considered to be on the outs and figured that uh, um, getting an alliance, getting an alliance with her means that uh, means that he's tossing her a life raft basically, and so that would be uh, and so that is a good way to ensure her loyalty in later in later times. And I also like his unconventional thinking about a possible showmance where it's like uh instead of oh i should break the showmance up it's like why can't i make the showmance work for me and he got that to happen yeah. um mike, that is something that's really cool <laughs> and mike i want to hear your thoughts on that because actually alex that is a really good point i want to echo that I, I mean that's you've never seen the wingman strategy that i can really think to you know force those two together so i think that was great to bring Jeremiah and Morgan together. She's on the outs. I think she's. I don't think she's weakest. I think Alexis was actually weakest. So I think LJ was to work with with her and Jeff. For it. So I, I like that. I think it's a new strategy that we haven't seen before. And I don't know about you guys, but there's something about Morgan I just really, really like. I mean, I just can't. I can't figure it out. It's just a mystery. <laughs> what I like. What I like I about her is equator. that she came up with that lie about, uh, oh, well, I actually picked the, I, I actually picked uh, the, the food, the comfort. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to come up with that. I, I would have just been, like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought she was really bad when it when it showed her tribe walking up the beach and the camera pans to her and she looks like a deer in the headlights. 
like I didn't expect her to do that. And so she's really exceeded expectations yeah, that true. I thought. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it seems as if I she... I think she went a little far saying that she picked the rice because you normally just get rice. But I think like her saying she picked the vinegar was a very clever... Was lie. her lie to the her tribe smarter than anything the Brains tribe did tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, Mom. as was LJ's uh, kind of taking a second think about it, because LJ was kind of like, I don't know about that, Morgan, like, in his confessional, yeah. talking about how he wasn't so sure, but. <laughs> there is one smart thing that I think the Brains Tribe did, but uh, that will be much later, so. Uh, yeah, we gotta, yeah, we gotta talk about the Bronze Tribe, and M- Mikey. I want to hear what you think about Cliff Robinson and the idea of him being known as a basketball player and no one seeming to care. And if you think that people are going to care later or like, cause I could picture them saying he's a basketball player. Like when it's time for tribal council, they could go, he's a basketball player. Let's get rid of him. Or if it's already under water, under the bridge. I thought it was crazy that he was the most recognizable athlete to play actual athlete not coach like jimmy johnson they didn't care like who was like man i've got your trading cards and i can't wait to play with him like he played in the nba for 20 years he's been cash floating around even if he didn't do really nice couldn't believe that they didn't care and they actually wanted to align with him who, you, know, you know usually yeah. that's the death thing in the game i just couldn't believe that who wouldn't want to bring him in though because you can go well, yeah you can bring him and be like you know you're gonna give this guy a million dollars that may be what they're looking at, but it was just this great, like, fun they had, like, instantly. And I just thought it was a crazy combination. It reminded me of Earl and the Owlman with better athletes. <laughs> I just, I, I, I just, I just got a testament to his um, likability, because clearly they're, like, a, quite a few of them are rallying around him to a point where it's kind of pissing Tony off. And I just must think that Cliff has to be, like, good people, that they're just like, awesome, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. I, I just think that in the words of another pro athlete that has been on Survivor, you can get his autograph after the show. <laughs> well, I mean, least famous <laughs> I, I, what? I kind of think that, you know, maybe the tribe's just like, fuck it. He's a nice guy. He's a professional athlete. Maybe he, we can take him to the end. I don't know. Was it, was it Lindsay that was, that seemed like she was jealous that everyone liked him? A little bit. Oh, yeah. I'll call that it. Lindsay. It was the hairdresser with the questionable hair, which uh, I don't know how that <laughs> yeah. happened. She does a dead-on Trish impression, though. That was really yeah. funny. Well, let's talk about the yes. Lindsay and uh, let's let's talk about that Lindsay and Trish kind of feud a little bit. I think Lindsay is completely screwed, and she's going to mouth off right before tribal council and be voted off. I'm just right off the bat. I don't I don't see how if she's already having trouble containing herself this early in the game. I can't picture her lasting that much longer. Uh, Michael, what do you think about that? And what do you think about Lindsay? I, I thought it kind of came out of blue. I didn't think that was very good editing. Just all of a sudden, Trish is like, yeah, Lindsay, you want to move a stick? And I was like, what, what's their beef with each other? I think that Sarah likes Lindsay better, and then the, the group likes uh, Lindsay better. I think she'll do better. I think she's these, it's like this opposite to track tribe, and I, I think they're going to go with her versus Trish, I just think. Even though Trish made that big gesture... I think Trish is going to be the odd woman out, personally. Yeah. And what about well, it kind Tony? of just seemed like Trish looked up, saw that Lindsay was right in front of her face, and was like, hey, Lindsay, do you want to like come grab some firewood? It didn't seem like anything very crazy yeah. until Lindsay made like this huge deal about it. I don't know. It's funny that you say you think Lindsay is the one getting a mouth off when we have Trish on the tribe. Yeah, although Trish was like, and then Trish was up the hill bitching about it, so I don't know. <laughs> Unnecessary. Uh, they must be really bored. That was referencing um, Lindsay making fun of her teeth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay, Patrick. <laughs> I got like Dan show. from Animal, that, that albino ash. That's what Trish reminded me of. Well, do you guys think that the Bronze Tribe is going to completely erupt when they go to Tribal Council with all these personalities? Because, I mean, they're already fighting, and it's really early on, and we have so many little alliances and factions. You have Wu and Cliff, you have Tony, which, and it looks like Tony's going to become friends with Sarah. Sarah's obviously friends with Lindsay, and Tony is also friends with Trish. Do you think that's just going to be a giant cluster mess? Or do you think they'll cleanly vote out Trish or Lindsay? Michael, what do you think? 
I think somebody will make a mistake at the challenge and they'll blame that person between Trish and Lindsay. I think it might be Trish that would do that just because I think Lindsay's probably more athletic. Mm-hmm. And you think they're not going to have much strategy behind it? Just you lost, you can go? I think they're going to, it's going to be shown as it was something of the challenge, but there's tighter bonds they haven't shown us yet. I really think. I know Tony's trying to get in with Sarah, but you don't lie to a cop about being a cop and then get back in her good grips. I think he could be on the hot seat, too, and he also chopped his foot somehow on that bamboo. I don't know what the hell he even did. <laughs> he got his foot stuck and was trying to drag it with his foot or something, and then they got blood all over the whole like blood versus water came back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I think they're going to be looking for a reason to boot one of them. And so if it up in a challenge, that'd be a good reason, you know, that they can show on the show. Well, let's go ahead and let's talk about the challenges because we had two different challenges tonight, both of which were pretty unique. Uh, just from a production standpoint, I, I always like it when they have the long, grandiose challenge. And it was fun watching the Brains Tribe just completely suck ass at it. But have these challenges been done before? I mean, some elements have, but that this isn't wasn't a copy challenge, was it? Nope. Just that uh, they were uh, bits and pieces of other challenges that had been done, but I don't yeah. think that they had the climb in. They, they've had released the fish traps before. I don't think they've had the climb into that. Uh, and I, although they have uh, had had you take apart and put together carts. Uh, uh, the the configuration wasn't the same, and also the uh, vertical puzzle was of a new kind. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I want to so. say this. When J- Jachi was messing up the puzzle in the second challenge, I wasn't too worried about it because in South Pacific, we saw the exact same thing happen where it takes forever to get that first piece in, and that challenge is a pain in the ass. However... When uh, LJ caught up to her, that's when I was like, oh, she's just really, really bad at the challenge. Because, I mean, they didn't really show how, just how difficult that puzzle really is. Well, the thing is, every every single time they have a puzzle like that, Token Sheen, South Pacific, uh, it takes that first piece. That locks in several of the rotating elements. Yep. And then mm-hmm. you can – and from there, it should be – but not with the brain stripe. And I guess the reason why we've all been quiet is we're all trying to hold in all of our raw <laughs> emotions and just confusion because we haven't took the taken the time to talk about the brain stripe because I wanted to save that towards the end because that's where we're going to spend the majority of tonight. But let's go ahead. Let's just talk about the wonderful, chaotic – mess of the brains tribe and michael if you want to uh, lead the discussion talking about garrett and him being voted out with an idol in his pocket and him just shooting himself in the foot i I don't know i think you'll have better adjectives than me i just can't believe how you you just don't talk about strategy like that and i thought he was i thought he was he had a really you know sinker but i couldn't believe the stuff he said and how more ironic he was at tribal council, like, yeah, our alliance, and, like, he was just, he had his shovel, and he was just dumping sand on his head, I just, I don't know how he got on Brains Tribe, I don't know what school he went to that he's the valedictorian, like, <laughs> you know, how short was the bus they were driving to that place, because what is, <laughs> what was going on there, he plays professional poker, and he gets demolished, and, you know, I think, he reminded me of Jean Robert, just because, both of those professional poker players, but John Robert was such a better reader of people. I just, I can't believe Garrett. I just, I have, I don't know what he was doing on the Brains Tribe. I think they, they cast this season. They had to stick him on one of the tribes. He could have gone on any of them, but they stuck him in Brains. Well, yeah, I guess on paper he's small, but <laughs> I just couldn't believe what he did. I have a couple little things to add to that. The first thing is, Probst announced that they did not make the twist until they had already cast the groups. They cast everybody, yeah. and then they made the twist, which I think that's why LJ's on beauty. And an, yeah. I will say this. Someone as big as he is and how completely ripped and jacked he, he is, he probably was super dehydrated and super hungry, and it probably hit him harder than a lot of the other people. But also, I guess my bigger point is every single person on the Brains tribe besides Spencer 
I think, dumped sand on their face tonight in some way, shape, or form. So, Alicia, you're a woman. Let's talk about Jati. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. She... Um, and how is she still in this game? God damn it. She is fantastic. Coming into this season, I was very excited to see Jatia uh, be strategic, be kind of maneuver. She talked about enjoying playing strategic games. She talked about, you know, how intelligent she was. And just the way she carried herself made me think that she was not going to be this explosive, reactive, you know, stereotypical like black woman that is so often cast in television shows. And then she went and took a page from Brandon Hanley's playbook of stupidity and anger and tossed everyone's rice in the fire. Although I suppose that like the justice in this is now she is going to have to suffer not eating because she fucking did that. But I don't know. I just, do- I don't know. How did she, she- not get voted out? I don't know. It's, I mean, I think it was because of, I think it, I think she was not voted out because Cass is constantly like maneuvering herself to try and be in the best position, most secure position possible. But she's still I third. Think, yeah, she is still third, but you know, I think, I think Cass and Tasha of like the three girls are going to stick together more than they would with Jatia because of the crazy. So I think she's now kind of really number two. Yeah, is she third? I, th- I thought she was more with uh, Tasha. Yeah, she's in a three, but I don't think she's third. So yeah, do you think that's and, why she did it? I think I, th- I honestly think so. I think she's very, very observant and shrewd, and she's making sure that she's constantly, you know, her, like, good for her. Yeah, I think Tasha's I would, argument I would about... Like <clears throat> um, I think her argument about... Uh, Cass, do you want to be one and two instead of three and four? And I think that just spoke to her. You know, they can deal with the crazy if they can better themselves in the game. Yeah. She undermined her own game without the. You gotta. You gotta be thinking about yourself. You gotta be thinking about the whole tribe and just keeping Jati around. I don't think she did that well. She helps herself step up slightly, but it's what do you want to be second in a tribe that gets decimated? Yeah, I know it's. Yeah, I immediately just kept thinking about, like, Denise and Malcolm. I just saw it. I was like, okay, which two of these, like, buffoons are going to get this tribe alive? (laughs) Well, that's the the thing is Garrett carried them in that uh, part of the challenge where they were carrying the heavy things. I mean, I understand that maybe this will buy Cass one more tribal council if she goes to tribal council again. But at least with Garrett around, she had a shot of winning immunity where I I think this – I think maybe they might win immunity once, but I think they're about to get completely just decimated, as Michael was saying. Maybe the next um, serves them right. Maybe the next <laughs> challenge is about um, nuclear physics and stuff, and so we'll be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> they call it the atomic bomb. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Regular bomb making. They come in and it probes just has like a giant blackboard, and he's like, "Okay, finish you Eula's therm or something," and then Jati's like, "Okay, I got this." Yeah, I mean, that'd be great if they kept it around. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Cash, I want you to talk about the wonderful Spencer because he seemed like a complete asshole that was going to suck at the social game. Is he doing better at the social game or does everyone around him just completely crazy and that's why he's able to float by? Uh, I, I, think, I think that his uh, staying around was uh, because uh, of forces out of his control because uh, really every like like you said everybody screwed up today David screwed up by being himself because the because I don't even follow baseball and I, I know what his face looks like and I know how much of a legendary asshole he is so uh, so he screwed up by being himself Cass screwed up by a, willfully aligning someone like that jatia screwed up we've talked about that uh so i, I would yeah, argue just Tash... every, every, everything just went Tash. nuts i had two predictions coming into this season that was that there are more than three tribes therefore one of them will suck because that happened in philippines and that happened in uh panama and two was that the brain tribe would be completely unpredictable i was right on both counts <laughs> Well, and I would argue that Tasha messed up when she 
kind of went off on Garrett, like, we got to play Survivor. That too. Which, to, th- that's another yeah, thing I'm going to make that is. That was stupid. You, playing Survivor means you adapt to what other people are doing. Playing Survivor isn't always, you know, backstabbing and manipulating. If you're with a group of people that don't backstab and manipulate, if you start doing that, you'll be voted out. So I think that I, that argument of you're not playing survivor i always find that faulty because as if you're on survivor you're playing survivor that's what makes the game so good yep. i think she should have left for the confessional i think um i've kind of for her because what kind of asshole is going to tell you no you can't go anywhere you can't talk to anyone well they i are they could have just walked away right then like i'm amazed that the moment garrett said that that like everyone just didn't immediately scatter <laughs> <laughs> but then you know you're held accountable by Garrett and I guess if you go around and scheme with someone you're going to be labeled with them because everyone knows what you're doing I mean it's a lot easier to do it when it's casual people walking around um you know like oh let's go get some water and then you talk to them on the way there <laughs> Mike do you want to talk point. about Cass some yeah, insight uh, on her I agree somebody else said she reminds him a lot of Denise and I can see her just she's gonna do whatever tonight she could go very deep in the game even if tribe gets destroyed because they're going to get thrown on other things. There's going to be people with agendas on the other tribes. I think she's smart. She's a lawyer. She's not letting anybody know that. Um, I, I think she's I think she's got a long long time in this game. She, she, whatever she does, they could dump Spencer next. They could dump the Jatia next. I, I think she's she's not really a threat now at all. So you think she did the right move, though, by voting out Garrett? I don't I don't think it was the best move, but it's a it's a good move for Cass. I don't think it's a good move for the for the tribe, but I think it's a good move for her. And if they can somehow win, they'll be fine. Even if they lose, I think she's got her ass covered. And I think she knows that. That you know, and I, I just I, I can't believe the Spencer high. I don't know. I've never heard of this kid, and I'm a huge fan. I don't know where he came from. I don't know where his ego came from. I love how Jeff said he's going to suck, and it's true. I just don't know where this guy got so arrogant and thought he was going to dominate this game. Well, that is funny how he was the one who I think didn't make any mistakes, and yet he's on the outs. (laughs) I guess that's a mistake, but, you know, just going back to Garrett, in his pregame interview, he said that he watched every season of Survivor twice um, to study for it or whatever. And then Jeff Probst was talking in an article that uh, was an unprecedented move that someone makes and talking about scrambling and stuff. And I don't know if, I mean, I don't know, just whatever he did, that was that was dumb. I, I've never seen that before in the show. I, we got a lot of first things tonight from the Brains Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, including Jeff's wonderful banter at them during the challenge, which... He loved saying that. He loved tearing into the nerds and having his wonderful Josh win. <laughs> he loved that more than anything. And I loved they were, it. And they weren't the worst. Ever. I didn't agree. Sorry, go ahead. Alicia? Oh, I was just, I was done. Sorry. Okay. But Turn I mean. it out, mark, <laughs> mark the time. I just, is this the, I know it's kind of early, but is this the, Worst tribe in Survivor history? Jeff's, Jeff would say so. You think Jeff would say so? Yeah, he, he loves picking on the nerds, like you said. <laughs> he wants to be that alpha male. He, <laughs> he uh, Alex, really, Alex really, is this the worst tribe in Survivor history? Uh, quite possibly, because everybody, like, yeah, everyone is screwing up. Uh, the, the, thing, the real thing that I was uh, surprised about as far as... Uh, you know, is how fast it happened. Like, only four, and Garrett looks like he's pulling an Austin. Like, I don't want to be here. It's too hard on my body kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That takes real (laughs) suckitude. That is true. I did not appreciate that. Well, like I said, I think it's because he's so much bigger, and when you have it, your body, you're that ripped, you're already kind of naturally dehydrated a little bit, so I think he was probably just in hell. But You would know, Colin. No, I, I mean, <laughs> that's one of the things, that's how you mean, that's a bodybuilding thing. The bodybuilders that listen to this podcast, because that's a demographic that I'm sure exists, they will back me up on that. Yeah. Michael, is the Brains Tribe the worst tribe in Survivor history? No, tribes 
plus two before. I mean, they're they're a little all over the place, but the Baran tribe lost the first two challenges in Africa, then they dominated the rest of the game. So anything could happen. I don't want to say they're the worst ever. They're pretty shitty, but they're the worst ever. <laughs> pretty <laughs> shitty. That's what we're going to name this podcast, The Brains Tribe. Pretty shitty, but not the worst ever. I like that. It's a good way to put it. Okay. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to ask everybody to pick who they think is going to be voted out next. Just uh, not from all three tribes, just based on the previews, based on your gut. Who's going to be voted out next? And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick winners. And the winner, the person who picks a winner this season gets a copy of the game Brain Age. Or if uh, someone from the Bronze Tribe wins, I will mail you a basketball. And if someone from the Beauty Tribe wins, I will give you uh, these nose strips that I use to stay beautiful. And oh, the BRA strips. Yes, the BRA strips. <laughs> And I do believe I owe someone five guys from last season, now that I think about it. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, that's what we're competing for this season. Alicia, who's getting voted out next and who's going to win? I think just based on the preview, they showed a lot of the Braun tribe between um, Tony telling Sarah that he was a cop and Lindsay freaking out and being all pretty and shaky. Uh, so I kind of think Ron Tribe is going to have someone go home. And I'm going to say that that person is going to be Trish. I'm very torn between Trish and Lindsay. You're, well, you're going with Trish. Okay, now who's going to win this game? This is for um, a basketball, a nose strip, or a copy of the game Brain Age. It's very well, important stuff. I'm going to go with my favorite, my current favorite, which is LJ. You're going to go with LJ. All right. Yeah. Patrick, it's on you. Um, can I pick Trish to go home too? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, because I hate her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also going to pick someone that I hate that's going to win this, and it's going to be this whole season, and that's Cass. You're going, to go, you're going with Cass? No. I just, I'm competing for the no strips, or not the, the brain bug or whatever. I don't know. The brain age is a video brain game. Age. Yeah, I want that, so I'm going to go with Cass. <laughs> okay. Alex, who do you think is going to win? Patrick, you stole my pick. Oh, it's a good one, right? Yeah, because I because I'm like you know okay, well then we have another Denise on our hands and she's gonna you know Denise her way to the end. Uh, okay, so Support. now I well first of all let me tell you things going going because I okay. think that uh, aside from the aside from the brains tribe the tribe that got the most strategic development this episode was beauty. And I think that is, uh, and I think that it's towards them having somebody go home. And I think that the Bryce Alliance is, the the Wingman Alliance is going to uh, win out and send home Jeffra. Oh my word! Oh my uh, word! <laughs> yeah, she 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 talks like that. She absolutely has that voice. Okay. What little we heard. Now, who's episode. gonna win this game, Alex? Um. Uh. Since since uh, since my cast pick has been taken, I'm gonna go with Bryce because fuck it, he's cool. I'm sorry, who did you say? Bryce. Bryce. All right, I like that. That's a good pick. Now, Mike, who's going home next, and who do you think's gonna win? And even though you are a guest, if you pick the right person, you're still eligible to win the basketball, the uh, brain age game, and the nose strips. Just so you know. I'll help dogpile on Trish. I just don't think she's long for the game. I like Lindsay better. I'm going to be at Lindsay's bar next week, so I really hope she doesn't get the boot. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. Bryce is going to set up uh, Jeremiah as his wingman, and then Jeremiah is going to win. He's such a you know, uh, smooth-talking model, and I like I like Jeremiah. I think he's a good guy. So Jeremiah is going to win. That's your pick. I'm sorry. I got distracted. All I'll right. go with Jeremiah. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and say – Lindsay is going home, and my pick to win is going to be Wu. Wu? Yeah, I'm picking Wu. Woo! <laughs> Fuck it, why not? Is that almost just yellow? <laughs> yeah, yellow. Because, <laughs> I mean, with this season, I wanted to pick maybe Jati until I saw her, so I'm kind of at a <laughs> at a loss right now. To clarify, you mean Jatia, right? Yeah, Jatia. Okay. Jati. I will I will call her whatever I want to after tonight, and I will pronounce this. A apostrophe T I A. Yeah. 
<laughs> Anyways, before we wrap up this wonderful odyssey into the minds of the Brains tribe, is there anything anyone would like to add? Any final thoughts? Just that I'm really excited for this season. Survivor's back. Thank God. Woo! Fuck yes. <laughs> Off season's over. It's great. We can finally go back to having survivor-based lives. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, I want to thank you so much for listening, and I would like to thank all my wonderful panelists and our special guest, Mikey Albright, for joining. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night.